Alright let's talk about your face. Yes, your face. It turns out that very same face is now a key. A key. You probably use it to unlock your phone. You just stare at the little screen it stares back and bingo you're in. This is facial recognition and it's everywhere. It's convenient isn't it? No more remembering that ridiculous password you set three years ago. Think about it. Your unique personal biological identifier is being used to grant access to your most private information. It's a marvel of modern engineering, a testament to how far we've come. So, let's try to understand this face scanning wizardry a bit better, shall we? Because it's not going away anytime soon. So, how does this digital doorman actually work? How does your phone or a security camera know it's really you? Imagine you're trying to describe a friend's face to someone who's never met them. You'd point out specific things. They have wide-set eyes, a pointy nose, a square jaw. Facial recognition technology does something similar but with a lot more math. First, the camera captures an image of your face. Then the software measures various points on your face. The distance between your eyes, the width of your nose, the shape of your cheekbones. These are called nodal points, and there are dozens of them. This face print is then converted into a string of numbers or a code. When you try to unlock your phone again, it quickly remeasures those same key pieces and compares them to the stored data. Now before we all run off to live in a cave wearing novelty oversized sunglasses, let's acknowledge that facial recognition isn't all doom and gloom. It actually has some genuinely useful applications. One of the big selling points is enhanced security. Think about airports. Facial recognition systems are being trialed to speed up check-in, bag drop, security screening, and even boarding. Your face becomes your boarding pass. This technology can also be a massive help in law enforcement, like finding missing persons. It can also be used to identify suspects in crimes, comparing images from CCTV footage against mugshot databases. In healthcare, it could be used to identify patients, ensuring they receive the correct treatment. The potential applications are vast, touching almost every aspect of our lives. The biggest, hairiest monster in the facial recognition closet is privacy. Imagine walking through a park or a shopping center and knowing that every camera you pass is not just recording, but identifying you, tracking your movements. It's like having a very persistent, very nosy robot following you around. This isn't some far-fetched dystopian fantasy, it's a very real possibility. The idea of a permanent, inescapable record of your public life is, to put it mildly, a bit chilling. With widespread facial recognition, anonymity in public spaces could become a thing of the past, and this data, once collected, could be used for purposes you never agreed to, by governments for surveillance, by companies for targeted advertising, or worse, by malicious actors if data breaches occur. Then there's the issue of fairness and accuracy. Studies have shown that many facial recognition systems are less accurate for people of color, women, and younger or older individuals. The technology isn't infallible and the potential for misuse is enormous. So, where do we go from here? Hopefully not a dystopian nightmare. We have this incredibly powerful technology. One crucial piece of the puzzle is regulation. Lawmakers around the world are slowly waking up to the need for rules about how facial recognition can be developed, deployed, and used. Some places have introduced outright bans on its use by police or in public spaces. These laws often focus on requiring consent before your facial data is collected and ensuring transparency about where and how the technology is being used. Beyond laws, there's the critical issue of accuracy and fairness. Developers have a responsibility to make these systems as unbiased and reliable as possible. We need independent oversight and auditing to ensure these systems are working as they should. It's about shaping its development and use responsibly. Mm -hmm.